Whatever it is, you're bold enough, you're big enough to dream if you are intentional and deliberate about it. Now there are some aspects of it that are going to be organic, but if you are intentional and deliberate, if you build it on Monday, if you build it on Tuesday, if you build it on Wednesday, I'm at, I want you to understand that it's not gonna happen by luck. Productivity is always intentional and deliberate. And on Tuesday, went Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, set, no, no, no luck guys. Every single day, if you do a little, you're going to wake up one day and your dreams are going to be a reality. You can't just say you want it. You can't watch the video and say, I want it as bad as I want to breathe. It's cute to say it. But when it's showtime, when the sun comes up, when the sun comes up, you've got all the books, you've got all the tapes, you've got all the access. Now it's time to hunt. And what separates you from everybody else is that when it's time to hunt, you're ready to hunt. Everybody's got lions on their profiles. Everybody talks positive about themselves. Everybody talks like you're a beast. You dress like you're a beast. You've got the cards like a beast. But then when it's time to do what bees do, you, you, you back up. You got to get up and make it happen. I can, I will, I must. How do you get to that next level? How do I get my business to the next place? How do I get other people to the next place? Look, if you want to get rich, you want to be really successful. When I say rich, I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about a rich life, freedom, time with family, choices, get to do what you want. Look, if you want to be in business for yourself and free, you must learn to dominate. You cannot compete. Dude, what are you doing, man? What are you doing? You know what? Most people are going to spend more time in their life working than any other single thing and not being successful. You gotta be totally committed. Everybody agree? You gotta be completely uncertain. You want a million dollars? You want two million dollars? You want five million dollars? How much money do you want? How much success do you want? How much notoriety do you want? You want a New York Times bestseller? Why can't you have everything? Oh, but I'm 65, so what? Man, Colonel, Colonel Harlan Sanders made all his money after he was 65 years old. He wasted the first 64 years. If you're not sure of your own value, your own goals, and what you want, the world will never reward you of what you want, your value, and your goals. Do you need to pressure yourself? You need to cook yourself. You need a necessity level way up here. When I wake up in the morning, I write my goals down. When I go to bed at night, I write my goals down. It's the first thing and the last thing I do every day. I've been doing that for 25 years. Here are four steps you must take to create the next level of success in your life. Number one, you must get attention. You got to get attention. If you got a scream to get it, get it. What do these people have in common? Okay, there's Michael Jordan, Warren Buffett, Steve Jobs, Oprah, a Navy SEAL, and my mother. You know what they had in common? This. Greatness has in common immersion. They're immersed. They're immersed completely in their environment. Number two, they're dedicated, completely dedicated. Three, they have a total, total commitment. Immerse yourself, okay? You have to immerse yourself right now with reading, the right reading, audio programs, video. Find YouTube channels that are good for you. Immerse yourself with books, audio, video, daily, okay? You hit all three of those. Where I'm reading something, listening to something, and watching something. These are completely different ways to learn. Anybody can do this, folks. Anybody can do this. This is not about a college degree. This is about massive amounts of action to get attention for yourself, your brand, your company, your products, your ideas, your dreams. Life is really, really short. And I think that we don't value and appreciate, you know, our freedoms um, and our opportunities in, in, in our life. The universe is yours, all right? And you need to understand that. Success does not require you to look out the window. It only requires that you look in the mirror. To be successful, you don't have to look out the window and, oh, where is my help? Where are the people that I need? All you got to do is stop, look directly in the mirror, and the one person you need to blow up, the one person you need to be successful is looking right back at you. And if you're willing to make a commitment to that person in the mirror, if you're willing to look at that person in the mirror and say, I'll make a commitment to you from this day forward that whatever it takes, I'll do whatever it takes. Whatever it is you want to accomplish or whatever it is you want to do, you literally have to see it first.
If you're not trying to get out of your shitty situation, then every day you're choosing to stay in it. And you can't complain about being given the choice you keep making. You know, I, I, one of my favorite quotes is, um, change happens when the pain of staying the same becomes greater than the pain of making a change. You know what's so funny? We want people to make guarantees to us, but we're not willing to make guarantees to ourselves. You've never, you're not brave enough. You want to put it on somebody else. The reason why I'm not successful is because of my boss. Have you ever looked at yourself in the mirror and said, I'm not getting up on time. I'm not going to work on time. I'm not putting in 120% when I'm at work. You've never looked at yourself in the mirror and said, you let you down. Until you get to that point, you let you down. You always want to blame other people. You always want to, you want to hold other people to the fire, but you're not holding yourself to the fire. You just said you're giving 50%. You owe you an explanation. You owe you an explanation. You need to look at yourself in the mirror and say, why are you only giving 50%? What's wrong with you? You need to put yourself on punishment. And I stopped being a victim. Stop saying, I've got to wait for good things to happen to me. And I said, I'm going to grind. I'm going to fight. I'm going to work. I'm going to press toward. I'm going to learn. I'm going to do everything in my power. Every single day, I'm going to do everything in my power to become a victor and not a victim. Winners win and losers lose. I can't explain it any better than that. I don't know how it happens, but winners win. And if you create a culture of losing, if you keep being a victim, if you keep letting losing happen to you, if you keep letting people do you and treat you any kind of way, it's gonna become a culture. I have standards. I have value. It's easy to go through life holding on to things that are weighing us down. Guilt, resentment, doubt, worry, the problem is, when we allow these things in, they're taking up space for the good things that should be there. Imagine your life is like a container. You were created to be filled with joy, peace, confidence, creativity. But if you allow worry in, it pushes out the peace. There's not space for both. You can't go above 100%. You have a limited amount of room. If you allow guilt to take up space, that's space that you don't have for the confidence you need. Some people don't enjoy their lives is because their container, their heart is contaminated with so many things. They have 10% worried, stressed out over their job, 12% bitterness, mad at their neighbor, 20% guilt, beating themselves up for past mistakes. 9% jealousy, their co-worker is more beautiful. They don't realize 70% of their container is negative. How much space are you given to guilt, to shame, to regret, to being against yourself? Whatever it is, it's too much. Give no place to guilt. Give no place to worry. Give no place to bitterness. It can't come in and automatically take over. You control what's in your container. You control what you think about, what you choose to allow in. And we all have negative emotions, negative feelings. You have to make the choice. I'm not going to give this jealousy, this bitterness, this anger, valuable space and let it poison my life. I'm going to protect what I allow in me. And every morning when we wake up, we need to empty out anything negative from the day before. So you have to be disciplined. Say, no, I am not giving this offense any room. I am not going to let it sour my day. Or you wake up in the morning and thoughts of worry come. How are you going to pay your bills? What if the medical report's not good? You'll never get out of this problem. Don't allow that in. Take inventory of what you're giving space to. Life is too short to go through it with negative things holding us down. Worry will make you weak. Living stressed out will make you old, give you wrinkles, take your passion. 
Being bitter, angry, resentful will shorten your life. Get in a habit of emptying out the offenses, empty out the worry. You make a mistake, empty out the guilt. You didn't do your best, empty out the regret. Do better next time. He'll remind you of every mistake you've made for the last 30 years. It's easy to live life in regrets, thinking about what you should have done differently. Man, I should have raised my children better. Should have been more faithful in my marriage. I should have finished college. Don't go through life looking in the rearview mirror, down on yourself, living in regrets. You can't do anything about the past, but you can do something about right now. Being against yourself doesn't help you do better. It pushes you down. Why don't you forgive yourself? Why don't you empty out the guilt? Why don't you turn off the accusing voices? When you fall down, don't stay down. Get back up again. When the accuser whispers, look at you. You blew it again. You'll never get it right. Just answer back, yes. I know I'm not perfect, but I am forgiven. I may not be where I should be, but I'm making progress. I'm moving forward. I'm not where I used to be. Don't let guilt poison your future. Empty it out. Somewhere deep inside, you know what kind of person you were designed to be. If you want to produce great acorns, think like an oak, not like an acorn. Think like the person you intend to become. Like the Christian question, what would Jesus do? Ask yourself, how would the person I'd like to be? The acorn has three parts. It's got a stem, a cap, and a seed. And the stem represents its connection to the past. All the acorns, all the oaks that have ever existed in its line before are encoded in that transfer through that stem, the legacy into this acorn. The cap holds onto the seed until the seed's ready to grow on its own. So the cap represents your coaches, your mentors, your, your role models, your guides, your parents, your friends, your teachers. What kind of seed is in you? I believe part of our responsibility in life is to find out who we are, to discover ourselves. First off, we need to respect our nature. We need to realize we are part of a continuing chain that carries a legacy and a responsibility. There are many things we can do with our lives. And I think it's our job to find out what those things are and to do them as well as we possibly can so that we're passing along the right imprint for the next generation. So first, we need to respect our nature. Second, we need to know our nature. Take Aristotle's advice, know thyself. But know things about yourself that most people don't discover. For example, know how you're smart, not just how smart you are in comparison to others. In what ways are you smart? Know what you care about. What are the values that motivate your choices? If you will spend one extra hour each day studying your chosen field, you'll be a national expert in that field in five years or less. So nurture your nature. Figure out, first off, I am valuable. Accept that. I want to know who I am and I want to know how I operate and how can I understand me better. And then I want to nurture that nature. I want to apply myself in the world and put myself to work in such ways that the rest of the world says, well, that's cool. So ask yourself every day, how would the person I'd like to be do the things I'm about to do? The truth is very concise. The words are very few but people don't want to hear the truth because the truth hurts. But you grow from pain. You really, you really do. You can't know how to deal with success. You can't know how to deal with failures. You can't know how to deal with the bumps in the road that if you haven't had a taste of everything. We all have next level ability. 
There's not other people that aren't holding you back. Your boss isn't holding you back. Your parents aren't holding you back. Those are excuses. To me, there's no such thing as luck, okay? All luck is preparation meeting opportunity, plain and simple. You have to be ready, prepared for that situation. If you're an employee of this company and the boss puts you into a pressure situation, that's a privilege. He believes in you. You better deliver, because if you don't, that situation goes to somebody else and you may never get that opportunity again. Everything matters. If you take any situation and just take the word only and take the word just out of it, it changes the whole phrase. It's just a game. It's a game. It's only a job. The body has limitations, the mind does not. We focus so much on what goes on from the neck down that we forget it all starts from here. Everything starts from here. If you're not mentally ready, you're never really physically prepared. And that's where the preparation starts. I firmly believe that everybody in this room, everybody on this planet has a gift. It's your job to figure out what that gift is. Then it becomes your job to decide whether you're going to act on that or not. Everyone sees the work that you put in, but it's what you don't see is going to determine how far you're going to get. I, I, I hear stuff all the time. People say, oh, look in the mirror and you'll see why you're not succeeding. I don't believe that. Okay? It's what you don't see in the mirror. That's what's holding you back. It's what you're not willing to see is why talent is not enough. And when you, when you finally see it and accept it and decide to work on it, then you can take that next level. A lot of people ain't honest with themselves about what they really want. You want to make more money than you've ever made. You want to travel the world. I don't know. I don't know. You want to build your second home. I'm not sure what you want, but I need you to understand that you got to give some. You can't stay where you are and go where you're trying to go. Do not let any job that you do kill your dream. Because the only thing that can make you feel alive is your dream. Honestly believe that if people are not calling you crazy, your dream isn't big enough. No matter how many people told me no, no matter how many people lied to me, focus on one thing, make it your priority and stick with it no matter what. Whatever your dream is, whatever your goal is, you're not going to be able to make it happen if you don't have a dream party every day. Like you've got to have a dream session. You've got to take out 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, however much time you have, and you've got to actually go in a room, close the door, and you've got to see yourself doing it. You've got to feel yourself doing it. You've got to actually walk in it. You've got to go in the future, live it out, come back in the present, and start working toward it.